<laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural Design Future Symposium here in Singapore. Yes, give it up. My name is Dawn Lim, and I'm the Executive Director of the Design Singapore Council. We are the organizer of Singapore Design Week. I hope you have been joining us in the last five days, the myriad of activities and events that we've had across Singapore. Today's symposium is jointly organized with uh, SUTD Design Z, and I'm absolutely delighted to see all of you in person here today. Now, for those of you who've flown in from abroad to join us, many of our speakers, some of our friends from the media, I appreciate you've battled travel chaos and engine failures and jet lag to be here, so thank you for making it and staying awake today. Now, our theme for today is Agency for the Future, Design and the Quest for a Better World. Like many countries all over the world, Singapore faces complex and pressing issues that are contemporary to our time. Urban density, trying to put five and a half million and a growing population on an island that's 750 square kilometers. An aging demographic with a fertility rate that continues to remain low over the years. Climate change and rising sea levels for an island that is low-lying, widening inequality and challenges to access, similar to many maturing economies and developed economies around the world. And all of these are set against a rapid technological innovation and acceleration context that we've never seen before. We are looking at an imminent future of living in the spatial internet with the onslaught of Web3 technologies right before us. And these complex issues demand an empathetic, human-centered design approach. Design is a force for good. Design can be impactful, and design can have long-lasting good effects and outcomes on our society, our economy, and the world. Now, for those of you who've been around here for a while, you, like, you know we like to say Singapore is a nation by design. Our history, our geography, our resource limitations have always forced us to innovate at the edge, push the boundaries, to prototype at the micro level, but also at the systems level. So that we can design a city-state that is forward-looking, futuristic, and cutting edge. And through this process of designing a nation, I'm really proud to say I really believe we have developed a unique brand of creativity and design that has allowed us to be recognized as a UNESCO city of design. And so it is critical that a design festival like ours focuses not just on the future of design, but the design of the future as well. Our vision for Singapore is to be an innovation-driven economy and a lovable city by design. We want to infuse design into every way we work, live, and play so that we can make Singapore and the world a better place. I believe that we have a unique point of view about the design of the future and the future of design. And I think we should take that point of view out to the world to inspire more people to embrace design as a vehicle of change and a vehicle of impact. And so I hope today will catalyze dialogue, discussions, thought around how all of us can embrace the challenges of this shared future I talked about and to create a better world by design. I leave you with this image of Singapore, one of my favorites, but also a very common one. 10 years ago, this did not exist. This is the future. This was by design. Everything is by design. On that note, allow me to introduce and hand off to the Festival Director of Singapore Design Week 2022, Mr. Mark Wee. Mark. There we go. Right. Thanks, Don, for the introduction. Uh, warm welcome to all of you all here this afternoon. My name is Mark. I'm the Festival Director of Singapore Design Week 2022. Curated by Paolo Antonelli, the symposium is actually a key event this week, and we are really thankful for all the support from all the media and the partners that we have here. I'm also extremely grateful to hear that this symposium has sold out with a long waiting list. I knew it was important from the, from the number of CEOs and senior public servants attending today. But I knew it was really important 
when even my wife decided to come this afternoon. <laughs> I think this speaks volumes, not only in terms of the caliber of the speakers, but also the relevance and the urgency of the topics that we're going to be discussing today. But these sessions will also be recorded and we'll share them on our digital and social platforms uh, shortly after. For the supporters of the past editions of Singapore Design Week, you'll notice that this year we actually have introduced three defining pillars of the festival's renewed vision, design futures, design marketplace, and design impact. And the symposium today is actually a key feature of the design futures pillar. Through conversations with global and local thought leaders, it was really clear that Singapore is a forward-looking city-state with a genuine opportunity to prototype a better future for Singapore and for the world. If you did not know, the Netflix series Westworld was shot in Singapore because renowned uh, Danish architect Bjarke Ingels, who was actually recently part of the design team that did uh, the Capital Springs building downtown, told the creators that if you had to shoot the future, it's right here in Singapore. So Paula Antonelli, a friend of the council's for many years, shared this firm conviction that Singapore is actually in a natural position to contribute to the larger global discourse on how we can live more sustainably in the future. Out of that relationship, Paula generously agreed to curate the future symposium that you see, and you are seated at this afternoon. As, well, as one of the most well-respected curatorial design voices in the world today, Paula has dedicated her career to changing the perception of design so that people are aware of the, design, of the importance of design in everyday life, and that design, in her words, is more than cute chairs. I'm beyond thrilled to hear from her and the, and the panel of esteemed speakers that we've lined up for the day. And judging by the sellout crowd, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the symposium is really a unique opportunity to share with the world that design can be a critical ally to our planet and humanity's future in a world marked by technological change, geopolitical instability, and climate change. So once again, I would like to thank Paula and all the other speakers for being here to share with us on how design can help us build a better world. And please join me in introducing Paula on stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you, Mark. And it's such a delight to be here. And thanks also to the two superheroes, actually more than two, but especially Narel Yabuka and Judea Chong that are backstage and kind of put everything together. So an applause to them, please. Yes. And we're standing in front of Practice Theory's Great Graphics, Singaporean Design Studio. One of, it was a tough choice, but they were definitely wonderful. I looked at so many uh, of the work of design studios here. And that just goes to confirm what I've always thought about Singapore. It's a paradise for design buffs. So uh, it's really wonderful to be here. A few nights ago, Mark asked me, what do you want to take away from the symposium? What would be success for you? And I told you, you know, Mark, mi casa es su casa. Your agenda is my agenda, and it's Don's agenda, and it's Jacqueline Poe's agenda, it's everybody's agenda, is to make sure that we explain to the world how design can be used better to be really part of a conversation that involves policy making, that involves planning the future, that involves really making things happen. Because as Don told you before, today we're here from many different fields. Of course, there's design buffs, but there's academics, there's scholars, there's government planners, there's like social civil servants. Everybody is here because we believe that design unites and brings together teams that can be really effective to build the future. And that's really what designers do. Not to mention that design comes in so many different facets. Yes, it's not only cute chairs, of course. And uh, it is many. It's interface design, it's urban planning, it's infrastructure planning. Architecture is a branch of design in my, uh, in my parlance. And I can say it. I know it's, it sounds a little blasphemous to some, but I'm an architect, so I kind of can say it. So with this in mind, and in Singapore, 
We call the symposium Agency for the Future. It's a little bit tongue in cheek because I think that Singapore is the only place in the world I've encountered where being a civil servant is akin to being a rock star. And I was telling last night that to Professor Lin Xiong Wan. But truly, it's a place where agencies really act where they really implement the future. The openness with which you talk about the issues that you have and how they can be solved or how they should be approached is refreshing and is not found in many places in the world. So agency for the future. At the same time, we also want to prove that agency is within each one of us. I believe that my role as a curator is not to tell people what's good and what's bad, but rather to make sure that I stimulate everybody, everyone's critical sense and curiosity so that every citizen can have more agency, more power to demand more, to push back, to participate and to really feel invested in the future that we are planning. So it really is important to attack uh, the future this way with a multidisciplinary approach that looks at systems. And this leads me to another quintessential characteristic of Singapore. As Don said, I, and I started being a friend of the uh, Design Singapore Council, and as Mark also reminded, many years ago, that's when I also met Pia Chu, who's here in the audience, because the panel that was organized by Design Singapore helped advise the what was then MICA, the Ministry of Information, Culture, and the Arts, on many different issues, and we would br be brought here once a year to discuss different subjects, but there was one recurrent topic. How do we make Singapore the hub of the health system in Southeast Asia, the banking system in the world? It's like it was always hub, 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 hub. And you know, what's the essence of a hub? It's being part of a system. And that was once upon a time where some cities in the world thought they were the center of the world. You know, it was New York, it was London, it was Hong Kong. But nobody thought yet of the importance of not being number one, but rather of being many number ones at different levels. And now that we're talking about Web3, that we're talking about distributed assets, that we're talking about disseminations and systems, hubs and spoke are the most simplistic representation of a system. Singapore has always seen itself as part of the system, and its complexity is a complexity by design. As you might know, Singapore has the most complex economy in the world together with Switzerland. It's an economy that is at the same time uh, a way to harness one's fragility and vulnerability and to strengthen one nation as the most important, not really soft power, but like meta power that can exist. So from all geopolitical and economical viewpoints, Singapore can really be the hub, one of the most important hubs of the future. And that's what we really wanted to uh, highlight with this program. I'm gonna tell you some of the uh, things that you need to know about today before we launch into the uh, important panels that we have. So the symposium will be split into three blocks that will be punctuated by what? Food and drinks. So we're starting now, then there will be a coffee break, then we will have another section, dinner break, and then grand finale. And each of these segments will be indicated also on the screen. And uh, uh, we will be involved presentations. There will be presentations and discussions. It will be very varied. One of our speakers, unfortunately, could not come at the last minute because of the family emergency. That's Natsai Audrey Chiesa, but she will join us on Zoom. So everything will be OK. We've already done all the tests. And during each panel discussion, you will be able to ask questions via the pigeonhole platform. And at the end, when we'll have the discussion, your questions will be filtered to Narelle, who will filter them to me, and I will make sure that at least one of the questions will come from you. So you, you, this morning you have received an email from Eventbrite containing a link to pigeonhole. So you can use your mobile devices to go to pigeonhole.at, and the key of the event, the passcode is DFS, all caps, 2022. I think, yeah, I don't have it behind me, but DFS, Design Future Symposium 2022. And maybe you have already scanned the QR code at the beginning, so you know already how to handle that. 
But with this said, we're going to launch into a really diverse set of panels and uh, some quick presentations. Just maintain attention and don't try to remember everything. Just remember the impulses. Also, this whole symposium will be online after us, afterwards, so you'll be able to just uh, go back and look at all the different uh, things that you might have missed. What is really important is that we're going to leave you wanting for more. Uh, we're not going to answer all the questions at all, but we're going to show how Singapore is asking the right questions. You know, it's not giving all the answers yet, but it's asking the right questions, questions that could be extrapolated by many in the outside world. Singapore is a curator like I am and does not try to tell the world what's to, what to do, but rather to stimulate the world to look at the future in a way that is curious and constructive.